I'm not trying to just get your information. I'm trying to hand out a feeling to you. People remember you for how you made them feel, not for the information or the or the material things that you've given them. You are listening to the Redefining Wealth podcast with Patrice Washington. In today's episode, I sit down with one of the most connected men I know. He is the host of the Know Your Legacy podcast, Vipul Bassanya. He says that if you're going to network, you may as well do it with intention. Hey there, this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com, where we chase purpose, not money. Welcome back to the Redefining Wealth podcast. We are the only financial education show that never really talks about money. And that's because we believe that wealth is so much more than money and material possessions. If you're an OG listener or a purpose chaser, what you know better than anyone else out there is that wealth is truly all about well-being. And that means that we have to unpack every other area of our life that actually impacts our money before we can assume that we're going to be great with it. Just is what it is. And so we do that by looking at six different pillars. If you want to know what those pillars are, I encourage you to go to my website, patricewashington.com. Click the start here button. And there's this quick audio that now just tells you exactly what the pillars are. And you'll be able to take a little assessment and see where you might want to start first. But one of those pillars is the people pillar. And we believe here in creating relationships that matter. I have said over and over again that I know I am only where I am because I have been very intentional about honoring the relationships in my life. And so often We are looking for something out there from someone so far away, but really there are people all around us right under our nose that we are really not leveraging. We're not leveraging the opportunity to go deeper, to support. And when I was thinking about someone who could have this conversation with us, I immediately thought of Vipul. Met him in social media, and he has been one of the most consistent people that I know in terms of just keeping in touch truly. And he's been able to create incredible traction with his podcast because of the secrets that he's going to share with you today. And so I really, really feel like this is going to be a blessing. It doesn't matter if you have a podcast or if you're looking for a job or uh, if you just want to be better connected in your community, you are going to want to stick around for these gems. If you're new, go ahead and click subscribe. I promise you're going to love us. I just know you will. You can check out our five uh, star rating reviews on Apple Podcasts and many of the other platforms. And before we jump in, I have to remind you that Redefining Wealth Live, yes, there's a live podcast taping. My first one ever is going down in Atlanta, Sunday, October 13th. It's a long weekend. You have no excuses. There's no work on Monday. <laughs> and you can come out and meet and greet with us. I'm actually taping two podcasts in one, the amazing Brandy Harvey. If you haven't listened to her episode, find it. Go back to our Results Not Resolution series from 2018 and listen to that episode. You are in for a treat. Marshawn Evans, Daniels also had an episode last year where we talked about her book, Believe Bigger. You want to hear these women in person. You want to do a Q&A with them. And I have tons of other friends who are your favorite guests from the podcast who are going to be in attendance, be in the building. We'll be meet and greet and doing Q&A, selfie stations, sweet treats, good conversation. And I can't wait to hug on you and love on you and thank you in person uh, for how much you add to my life and to this community. So if you want tickets, redefiningwealthlive.com. That's redefiningwealthlive.com. Now, let me introduce you to Vipul. Vipul Basanya is the host of the Know Your Legacy podcast. Not only does his show have a consistent five-star rating on iTunes, but he was able to build a $500 million plus network in 12 months. His intuitive ability to build and leverage relationships has allowed him to gain a reputation as a talented super connector amongst many high performers. He regularly speaks on the topics of universal laws to teach others how to become a magnetic force that attracts abundance into their own lives. Without further ado, here's my super connected friend, Vipul Vasanya.
Welcome to the Redefining Wealth Podcast, Vipple. Thank you. Man, I'm excited to have this conversation with you because ever since being on your podcast, I have been so impressed, so extremely impressed with the way that you just continue to cultivate relationship and keep in touch. You are a master at what we call the people pillar here, creating relationships that matter. And I just think from the very beginning of you reaching out about me being on your podcast, Know Your Legacy, most people get the interview and then they disappear. Like maybe you'll see something in social media, but you've been so intentional about continuing to build relationship. I really wanted you to just share why and how and just all of it. I wanted you to share that with my community because I think it's so important just in relationship building. So thank you for saying yes to being here. Most definitely. I'm, I'm honored that you've, you've taken the time and effort to, to give me some space, to give me a platform, to give me your time. And for, for those who are listening, I don't know if I'm a master. I'm just doing what I do um, to, the, to the best of my ability. I think I've got a long way to go compared to some of the other people who are out there you know, miles and miles ahead of me. I'm, I'm always learning. But I just want to quickly take 30 seconds of this time just to thank you for, for chasing off your dreams, to, to put the message out there of chasing purpose, not money, because the money will follow if you chase your purpose and if you're doing it in the right way. And for, for being as consistent as you are, because so many podcasts, as you know, because you're, you've been in the game for a while, drop off. But you seem to have a bigger why that, that draws in the right crowd, that draws in the right message and gives off the right vibration which is one of the things we'll talk about today. So thank you so much for, for doing what you do. Uh, thank you so much. So first of all, let me ask you, how did you find me in the first place? What made you invite me on your podcast? So it was your your Instagram profile. I think that some of the content you put out, it was re- it was regarding legacy. So straight away, I was like, yeah, I, I don't know who Patrice is, but I want to reach out to her. I don't know how I found your your profile in the first place because I, I was going through a lot of different profiles on Instagram to see who would be you know best suited for for the message I'm putting out, which is all about legacy and and, and um, building a long lasting message. But when I saw some of the videos that you'd put out and some of the quotes that you'd put out, which were which were your own about chasing purpose, not money, I knew that there was something greater to you than just about being America's. Um, money maven even though that's in your title that other people have given you it it doesn't you know end with money it's it, it begins with something else and it always ends up being being a, a financial reward in the end ro- rather than starting with that so that's you know i wanted to find out more about that and, and to dig into what actually got you to to get to that message in the first place like why do you care about it and why do you come at it from that perspective because there's not many people who do and those that do um, end up in the biggest impact You know what really strikes me about that, though? You saw something and then you researched, you looked around, you did whatever it was you did, and then you ended up in my inbox. And and the thing is, I get hundreds of messages, right? There are people who get thousands of messages, but somehow consistently you're able to find your way um, to people who would be considered thought leaders or influencers or whatever these titles are. You're very intentional about who you choose, the why, and then how you get there. How do you get into the inboxes of people? Because I think there's people out there who would say, I saw so-and-so and and I wanted to get to them and they never answered. How do you get so many people to answer you and to say yes? I'm going to take it a step step back. And before we get into tactics, I'm I'm happy to share tactics. And and I'll, I'll actually share with the audience if you know people are listening all the way through to the end. We'll link it in the description, or Patrice will link it in the description. A free PDF that talks about how to become or how to create a legendary network and the things you can do to get yourself in the right vibration, so you're magnetic enough to attract them. Because essentially. We're not talking about law of attraction, but we're talking about how to become magnetic enough so that you can bring in the right people into your life. Because there's so many, as you just said, people who send out messages and emails and texts and calls. But why is it that only some people get a response and not others? Because it's the it's the energy and the intention you do it with, first of all. And then the second thing is the tactic that you've used. So it it has to align at the right time as well because it's funny how you saw my message and you thought to respond to it compared to hundreds of others that, that probably wanted to reach out and find out about how they could make more money online. So the first thing I would say is it starts with the mindset. 
And I know it's a bit of a cliche word, but I'll tell you why it starts with the mindset because it's only hit me this year, which is why I've been able to push my game to the next level because I realized that the real secret source, if you will, is not about tactics and, and about spamming people with emails. It's about, first of all, why are you doing what you do? Mm -hmm. So the reason I started my podcast is because the why was bigger than me. I felt like I had a message to deliver. No one was doing it in the way that I saw myself doing it. So I thought it's bigger than me because the person is attracted to the mission, not the man. So if your mission is correct, then the man or the woman will come to you and they will agree to stay with you and come into your world. The reason you, you responded to me and the first thing you said was, I just spent a week on, or oh, sorry, last week I, I was on stage talking about legacy. Definitely we can connect. You didn't say, oh, I like your content or I like what you're about. Oh, I know that you know this person. The, that's the first thing you said. And that's because I put it in my message that this is what it's about. So I wasn't reaching out to someone random. I already knew that you were passionate or somewhat involved with my message. And so you'd be part of the mission straight away. And then it's a different story when you talk about keeping in touch and turning a fan into a friend. So that's the first thing. It's the mindset. Why are you doing what you do? Why, why do you want these people in your life in the first place? What's the point? Are you just trying to get something out of them? Are you trying to you know, suck them out for information? Or is it because you want to build a relationship for a common purpose? And for us, it was we're helping the world in a similar way because we want people to think about legacy. That's why you tell people about chasing purpose, not money. Because it's more about what is it you're doing in this world that's going to help you get that money compared to what's the fastest get rid quick scheme. That is so key. Can we just can we just like pause right there? I know you have so much more, but what you said was was just critical that you came at it from a perspective of understanding what was also important to me. And so often when people reach out, right, that conversation about legacy in that instance. And it wasn't this long-winded ask that you made. It wasn't six paragraphs. It was like very to the point, right? And so often people only reach out because they're only thinking about what they want from you. There's no connection to what's important to you. That's huge because you said something that I was already like on a high about. It was an instant like, oh yeah, because I was already on a kick, right? So yeah. to, to actually connect to that was just was just really wise. And it the thing is, even for people who are influencers or you know, they're they already have achieved some level of success, they still want to be seen for more than just those things. Like they still want to be seen and heard for what's important to them. And I just think that your ability to tap into that just off the bat is just is brilliant. It's it's also because you need to think about the uh, the position of that person, right? So as you just said, that person is also looking for what what is it I'm going to get out of this? Why is it going to benefit me? And the reason you want to do that is because, uh, and I'll give you an example. When you when you look at a group photograph, whose picture do you look for first? Yourself. Always yourself. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So when you're looking at all of these messages or, or interactions that are happening, you're going to automatically think, what do I get out of this? What's in it for me? And there's nothing wrong with that. So you have to step back and, and be objective and say, what can I do to help this person? Because I currently may not have the fame, the success, the money that they have, but I want to bring them into the world, into my world. How do I do that? And I just got off a podcast, as we were saying, with the president of a company who's in, who's in sales and he, has to know how to interact with people to be successful in sales. And the one thing both of us agreed on was if you can't give um, your leverage of contacts, if you can't give your uh, wealth of experience because you don't have any, if you can't give your money, the two things you can give is time and attention. You have an abundance of time every single day for 24 hours that you can choose what to do with. And the second thing is attention. There's not many people who are present enough or attentive enough to show that I've done research on you. I've taken the time to look into your brand or your personality to see what suits you, what you're passionate about, what your purpose is. And I want to help you build that. Yours was legacy and I fed into that. And you were well-researched when we did the interview. So that's the other thing. Sometimes there are people who kind of um, get through and then I show up for the interview and it's very clear that they don't know anything about me. You know, it's that they really wanted to leverage the name or whatever they think of my brand, but not that they actually knew me uh, and what was important to me. Be and I know that because if I get on 
an interview and the first thing someone says is like, let's talk about budgeting. I'm like, okay, well, you don't know me at all. <laughs> you know, it's clear you have. Been <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, the reason I did that is, you know, just going back to this whole thing about the why it's what's the reason I'm doing this in the first place. Why am I having this interaction? Because I believe that the outcome of this conversation can have a greater impact than just me. It's not, it's not about me. It's you, your why has to be bigger than you. So when, in the days where you're having a, a crappy, you know, not a very positive day, why is it that you're still going to go and reach out to this person? Is it just going to be because you want to leverage the name? Because they're going to feel that. And they're not going to want to interact in, in that kind of a conversation because they have these interactions or these pitches made to them every single day. And even if it's not a successful person or a person who's quote unquote famous or, or has a ton of wealth in the financial sense, this should be applied to every interaction because I, this is why it comes back to an internal thing. Cause it's a mindset. It's, I want to leave every interaction better than I found it. I want to leave every person better than I found them in some shape or form. And this goes into my, my second point, which is, okay, you've now jumped on the podcast or you've now started a conversation or you're now having coffee with this person. What happens next? In order for you to turn them into just a fan, which is, oh, can we take a picture? Can, can you post on Instagram? Can you tag me to, can this person become a long-term relationship and a friend who I can reach out to, have a laugh with and, and have a good night out with? The difference between the two is handing out a feeling, not a business card. Mm. So I'm not, I, I'm not trying to just get your information. I'm trying to hand out a feeling to you. Because if I hand out a feeling, you're going to remember me more than a piece of paper that has information or a text that has information. People remember you for how you made them feel, not for the information or the or the material things that you've given them. Oh, V, that is so good. I remember um, there was a an event. It was like a speed networking event in Atlanta that I did years ago, maybe three or four years ago now. And I was one of the the speakers. And one of the things that I said is like, don't go around shoving your business cards in people's faces. Like, don't make this a competition about how many hands can you put business cards in? Like if your whole goal in coming here was just to leave, you know, your purse empty, <laughs> like have no more business cards, but you haven't made any true connections and had meaningful conversation that people will remember the next day, then you've wasted your time. You've wasted exactly. your time. There's, there's no point. And I think to your point, whether you're talking about networking in person or you're doing it online and through social media, as you've been able to do in particular, it's like either way, you want to create something that's meaningful. You want to create relationships that, that, that are meaningful because just trying to tally numbers up, it's just a waste of time. It, it really is. And the people chase the, the numbers game. And I know I did it at the start as well because I was just trying to reach out to to anyone and everyone and to to people who I felt were like, you know, the top, the top of the top. And the way I was going about it was completely wrong. So I started the podcast in January 2018. And around June, I remember, specifically remember the, the days and the weeks when it plateaued. And I was like, I'm not getting a response from a anyone. What What's going on? Well, why am I going wrong here? Like, I must be doing something that's not allowing me to continue with this success. And what I believe is, when you're on the right path and you, you're starting something that's going in the right direction, the universe will always give you beginner's luck. Uh, for anyone who's read The Alchemist, you'll know that the universe will give you a bit of a booster. And I believe for the first four to five months, I got that just to keep keep me going, to push me in the right direction, to say this is the right thing to do. But then it's about what do I need to tweak in order to take it to the next level? And that's down to me to to realize. And it was an interaction that I had with someone who wasn't actually doing podcast but the week that i'd reached out to him funnily enough out of the whole year that was the one week where he said i'm actually opening myself up to do interviews so i'm happy to do yours and he shared something with me about networking because he'd connected with so many big individuals at that time which to me seemed untouchable he was humble enough to share some of the tactics that he used on instagram and one of the key things he said was it doesn't matter where you're pitching you need to be straight and to the point don't leave them figuring out what to do next mm. so for example when you're signing off don't say to them let me know if this sounds good to you um let me know what the best time is you need to be very short and sweet and direct which means putting yourself in their shoes to figure out right this person's got a busy schedule how can i make it as easy as possible for them to connect to me 
And I'll just, uh, for your audience, I'll just read out exactly some of the messages that I send out. For example, on Instagram, I would say, you know, just using your name, let's say, for example, Patrice, quick question. That's the first sentence. And the reason that's the first sentence is because I'm using your name. It captures more attention than, hey, no one likes seeing automated messages that say, hey, you get a thousand of them on email, on text, on on DM every day. Why would you click on mine? So first of all, use the person's name because then using someone's name, whether it's um, online or even offline in person will grab so much more attention than someone who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then the second thing is I just go into, I host the podcast called Know Your Legacy. The mission, which is the key bit, the mission is to spread the wisdom of every legend to get people thinking about how they want to be remembered. What's the best email? So I'm being very specific. What's the best email for us to schedule a one-hour interview together? Let's make this happen, Vipple. So there's no thinking on their part. I just ask for one piece of information. Give me an email, yours, your assistants, anyone's. And once they do, I I now have a name, whether it's their email or an assistant's email. I now have a name of someone that I can reach out to who's in their inner circle. And that's it. And then you've built some traction. Now you're now you're in there. I love that. Get straight to the point. I don't think people understand how critical that is. I love getting DMs from people. I get so many But the thing is, when I'm kind of just trying to check and get through them just to make sure I could see as many as I can see, the ones that are five paragraphs and then they get to the end and I'm not sure what they wanted, I just like it, it blows my mind, right? And I'm sometimes we literally receive emails that are like 10 paragraphs and I'm still not clear about what people want me to do. And I would just love if you just ask so that it could be a straight yes or no or just something. But the having to go back and forth to understand what you need is also like, man, anyone who can get straight to it. I love it. I it's, love because it. it's because they've, they've taken the time to think about you. You're busy, right? So in the first interaction, why would you spend time with someone? Even in person, like if I was to meet you at an event, we're both going to thrive next month. If I was to meet you there for the first time, I have to make it short and sweet because there's a thousand people queuing up to, to see you or to speak to you or to take a picture or to do, uh, you know, to get your autograph or whatever it might be. What, what is going to make my interaction different? Uh, you know, it has to be straight into the point. I know you're busy. I just want to let you know that I really appreciate what you said about X, Y, and Z during your speech. It really impacted me because of this personal reason so that you know a little bit about me. I've quickly opened up something about myself so that we know each other. It will be good for us to have a conversation when you've got a spare minute. Please let me know. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just putting right. it out there, but it's straight to the point. And it's personable as well because I'm being vulnerable enough to open myself up to you. And whether you're an influencer or not, this works with any relationship. If you can be the first one to open up, it's automatically going to put the other person at ease to say, okay, maybe I can be safe around this person. Let's open up. And then it becomes about becoming a long-term relationship and a friendship rather than this is a one-off interaction because we're just exchanging formalities. Yes. Two things there. First of all, you're so right. The people who open up and share an actual story with me, not a long winded story, but just something and they connect it to something in my work. I always remember. I always remember. And not that I'm even intentionally trying to like have this great memory because, you know, age, but (laughs) but somehow (laughs) you're you're not that old. Trust me. (laughs) (laughs) You know, people say, you know, I met you in Dallas and I told you about my daughter and I'm like, oh, your daughter who got the swimming lesson. And then she did like, I can finish the story. Like I do that all the time. And I think it's, you're right. Like when you are able to open up and especially as someone who's a speaker, I love when people can share what they took away. That sticks with me way more than like, oh my God, I like your dress. I like your hair. I like this, you know, which is nice. And I received those compliments. But at the end of the day, I want to know that my work mattered. And I always feel like that's another way to really create a connection. So I always encourage people when you are going someplace, if you take the time to meet whoever it is you want to meet, sow a seed of like what, what their work has done for you, because that does create a different connection than someone that just says, I want a picture. You know, like that that doesn't differentiate you from from anyone else. And then when you talk about the long term piece, now, this is where I've really been impressed with you. So my my recollection may be all out of order, but it doesn't matter because the sentiment is there. (laughs) So one of the things that I'm really impressed by is I did your podcast and you ended up sending me a thank you gift. And 
that rarely happens, right? I do the same thing, but that rarely happens where you send me these a book and the really great note cards. And I remember it got lost somehow in the mail or something happened. It went to the wrong place, but you followed up um, a couple times. You've made introductions between me and other guests that you've had that you thought would be a good fit for me or just someone I needed to know. You just created multiple ways to keep adding value after the fact. And that is the thing that I have been most impressed by. And the thing that separates you from so many who say, okay, let's keep in touch. You really keep in touch. It's because I care. Like, this is why it comes back to the why. What's the point of all this? The point of all this is because I believe that the interactions we have are going to impact someone along the line. So initially, yes, it starts with a podcast conversation. It starts with a, a general conversation that we have initially. But then later on down the line, we could put, we could collaborate and create some work just as we're doing now. And this was not even, you know, in a million years in my reality that I thought, OK, she's going to ask me to be on her podcast. This is something that you just said out of the blue that blew me away. And to this day, I'm I'm humbled that you are taking the time and the space to allow me to to have this platform. But this is what I mean. I came at it with the genuine intention of wanting to impact the world and for us to stay in touch because it's it's needed. We're of the same mindset. Why shouldn't we know each other? I value myself as much as you value you. And I know that we can both bring impact to the world. So let's keep in touch. And the way it's going to happen is if I make the move to do it. So let's be honest, I'm a stranger to you after that conversation because you've done this many times. You've had how many you know, X amount of interviews. You've spoken on so many stages. You've shaken so many people's hands. I, as I said, don't have the opportunities or the the money or the experience to give you when it comes to the areas that you know best about. So what can I give you? Time and attention. So time, I'm going to make the time to actually write you a handwritten card and to, to give you the time to speak on my platform, which is growing. And the attention piece is... Let me listen to what she wants. Let me listen to what she's involved with. Let me listen to what she's passionate about. Let me listen to what she cares about. And how can I feed into that? Well, the best thing I know how is I've read a lot of books. So automatically, it's I know that this resource and this resource could really help her in some shape or form. Why don't I send that to her? Oh, she also said she likes this this particular verse from the Bible. She meets a lot of people. So maybe she can give it to a mastermind. I don't know. But it's something that I felt I wanted to do because it's going to bring value to you. I didn't expect anything in return. But it just so happens months later, you decided, okay, seems like he, he can bring some value to my world. Let me give him a platform to to speak on. So it's about the long game always. Well, you know what? It really came out of the fact that you really took me up on the offer of continuing to just schedule calls here and there. And so I think we had a call scheduled and I may have gotten sick. It, I think it was the week I lost my voice, actually. Yeah, and it was. So, I remember you messaging me. Yeah. <laughs> and then you followed up, though, and you rescheduled. And then we were on and we were just chatting. Like, we were literally just like catching up like, OK, well, what's going on? And what do you have going on? And we got into this really great conversation. And then it came up and I was like, wait a minute, we should just be talking about this on the podcast. Like this is this will be great for people to hear just this type of conversation. And so even with the actually following up to have the call, I am guilty myself of not always doing that. Now, I'm a wonderful texter. (laughs) (laughs) I can text pretty decently, but actually following up and making the time to have the call, again, impressed. And there are so many people out there that just really don't understand the value of relationship. And I harp on it so much because, you know, for me, again, with the people pillar, I always say there's always someone watching you who has the power to bless you. And in having these consistent interactions with you, it does make me shift to like, how can I support V? Like, what, what could I do that would be a value to him? And sharing you with my podcast community, because I have no idea, you know, who's listening at any given moment, but I feel like there's so many people who could like benefit from you in so many different ways. So, you know, the podcast is my baby. I protect the podcast. So if I have anyone on, it's because I truly believe in what they're talking about and they have to be adding value to the community. And that's not about money. That's not about having a huge platform. That's not about having some, you know, number one book somewhere. It's not about any of that. It's just about, can you genuinely add to the audience and 
because of how you've shown up, I definitely, it wasn't a thought. We were chatting and I was like, you should be on the podcast. And it, and that was it. You know, as you were talking, I had two examples that I wanted to just share with people who are listening right now. And th- the first one is this. I had a guest on a few few months back and he is a massive individual in the branding space. So he has a massive branding agency and creative agency. And we were just going back and forth in conversation live on the podcast. And I didn't ask him anything to do with how do you be successful and what's the best tips to marketing? This was about his story because I care. How did you actually get here for someone who's lost, for someone who doesn't have direction? What did you do? How much money did you put behind building yourself up so people can see the time, money, and investment it takes to get to where you are, which is making multiple six, seven figures a year uh, for someone who's you know 29 years of age. That's impressive. Because the energy was so good, and I'd, again, time and attention, because I'd given my time and attention. At the end, he's off air. He was like, look, I don't know why I'm saying this, but if you need any advice, you need me to look into anything about your brand, you need any consultancy, I'm happy to do it free of charge. I'll just, you know, we'll just jam on a call. I'll just shoot some questions at me and I'm I'm happy to answer. Of course, I'm super humbled by that. And that was just because I was genuine. I took interest in him. I gave him the two things he probably doesn't get from a million people asking him about how to make money, which is time and attention. Mm -hmm. And the second thing in terms of what you said about someone has the power to bless you. Yes, they definitely do. I just said to you that I had an hour before this podcast, I had someone on my show who's the president of the one of the biggest, you know, which is going to be one of the biggest supplement companies in the world. First of all, the company does, you know, $200 million a year and he's the president. Why did he give me his time and, and effort and attention? I don't know. But then he revealed it during the show and it was this. I sent him a pitch via email. And I didn't get a response for a while, so I followed up. And then his assistant reached out to me, and we we made it made it happen. To this time, I hadn't spoken to him directly until we went live on the podcast. Now, when this conversation about relationships came up, he said, "You know what I did when I got your email? I looked through your podcast. I saw that I knew someone that you'd already interviewed, which is a, a, a sports and celebrity coach called Ben Newman." And I text I texted him. And I said, is it worth jumping on Vipple's podcast? And the guy came back and he said, he's a brilliant dude, definitely. And he said, that's the only reason I agreed to do it. And I'm, and I'm glad I did because we need to do a part two because we, we get on so well. And again, the same thing off air. He said, look, I have to shoot, but I'm going to holler back at you. If there's anything you need, I know some badass people I can introduce you to. I'll be happy to do it. I didn't ask him for anything because over time, there is always someone who's watching you that can bless you you don't even know who knows who in this world so make every interaction and leave every interaction better than you found it Mm, that is so good one of the things that i'm really clear about let's say when i go into like networking environments things that i know are going to be for networking so a conference a seminar any of that one of the things that i practice is two things actually one Asking people how I can support them because that's kind of uncommon, right? People are usually talking about what they want and what they need, but asking people how I can support them while still holding the space for what I really do need to take me to the next level in my business. So just knowing what those things are, um, knowing what I need next has made me so much more just intentional and strategic because I used to find V that I would go places and let's say for quote unquote networking. And I was like the person who would hang out by the food. (laughs) 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 I I would hang out by the food. Now you meet lots of people by the food or by the bar. Don't get me wrong, but I got like really comfortable being a wallflower. I think they call it like just standing on the wall and like talking to whoever came up, but not really creating like something meaningful that I could go on with. Right. And I wanted to know from you, how intentional are you though, once you've built relationship or at whatever point about still being able to express, knowing that there's people who can bless you, but still being aware and know how to express what it is you really do need. Like, when is it okay to, to make the ask? I think you'll naturally know because of where the where the relationship stands. So it should never be in the first interaction because the first interaction should always be about that person and how you can provide value to them. And 
every interaction thereafter should always be about providing value. However, usually it happens about two or three conversations in. Because if you've if you've played your cards right, if you've been authentic enough, if you've provided the right type of value to them, they will say to you, how can I help you? And that's when you can drop it in because they've opened up the space for you to say it. You don't have to say it. It should get to the point where they open up and say, how can I help you? Or I know you mentioned this. Please let me know if I can help you with that. And if they don't and you guys get on really well, one thing you can say to them is, I know that you're super busy and you know we recently did catch up. I was thinking because you're quite good in this space or you're an expert in this space, I just wondered if you could give me some advice or a quick bit of uh quick bit of help regarding this thing that I'm facing at the moment. What do you think? And just leave it to them. Kind you have to leave it very casual um to to start up that conversation. Never be like can you jump on a coaching call with me? Can you do this for free for me? It's very casual. Because the way I like to think about it is, how would you do that with a friend? You wouldn't be awkward with a friend. You wouldn't be rude and direct with a friend. You'd just have a normal conversation like we're having now. And so when when me and you have been speaking, I never said to you, can I use your platform? Can I leverage your audience? Instead, I said to you, who can I help get into your mastermind so it can help your community? And your, you know, through, through the conversations we've had, I think it was maybe two, two or three conversations in, you asked me to be on your on your podcast. And I keep bringing this example up because it's such a good example of just me and you talking because this is how this relationship was cult- cultivated in the first place. Right. What do you say to people, V, though, who are, um, I would say maybe a little thin-skinned, right? So they make the ask and they don't get what they want the first time. Maybe they follow up, they don't get it the second time. And maybe they just get pure rejected. Like it's a straight up no. How do you keep going? So again, it comes back to the why. Why are you doing? Why are you why, why are you trying to make that interaction happen? Because that first of all will drive you through the rejection, and second of all, the way I like to think about rejection is that it's objective. It's not personal to me, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring it up is a live example is I had the editor of Entrepreneur Magazine on the podcast a few months ago, and when I reached out to him first he blew me off. And then I reached out to him, I think two or three times after that, because he said, I have a book coming out. My schedule's super crazy. I have a baby on the way. Please reach out to me in a few more months. And then I did the same thing. He said the same thing. And then I think the third time when I reached out, he was happy to organize it. And during the podcast, what he said was, I get so many people reaching out to me that I don't know who to give my time to and who not to. So the way I judge it for podcasts is if you've got more than seven or eight episodes, then I know you're probably going to be consistent and you're serious because you've been posting for the for the period of time that we've talked, which is the two or three months I blew you off, you were still posting episodes, which showed me that my time is well invested in you. So then I'll happy I'm happy to do it. So it's objective. It wasn't me as an individual. It was is this person worth my time and money? And if he sees or she sees that it is then they will invest their time and money, you know, into you. So it's, it's look at it objective. Don't take it, don't take it to heart. It's just part of the process to make you thick skin. Cause if you're thin skin, then when it gets to higher levels of the game and you're trying to reach more and more difficult people, you're not going to be able to withstand the, the rejection. You have to be willing to enjoy the journey because it's, it's making you the person you need to be. So eventually when you reach the, the higher level of the game, you can, you can tackle it. Yeah. I love that you said that because people sometimes I feel do take it very, very personally when you don't want to do something or you're not able to put it in the schedule. But I think that what they forget is there are a lot of those requests. Like they're one of many requests, right? So whatever it is that you feel that you admire about someone, there's probably like a hundred or a thousand or even 10 other people who admire that. And they're making very similar asks at the same time. And so... If the person is off running that multi-million dollar company or traveling the world or doing whatever it is that you admire about them, you have to realize that so many hours are really spent on that. They don't spend, you know, doing interviews is not their full-time job or, yes. or you know, coaching or mentoring other people is not a full-time job. It's not what they do. The reason that you know them is not because they do that all day. Their, their, their majority of their time is spent doing what they do. 
And then they have to put time into the other areas of our lives. And I think it's so interesting when people take it very personally about even for myself, why I can't, you know, participate in an interview. It's like, dude, if you've seen me on 10 interviews, then that is the limit for this season. Like that takes a lot of time just coordinating and and then getting on. And it, it takes a lot of time. And so I love that, like you said, with the guy from Entrepreneur Magazine, the thing is that you followed up. Sometimes we'll tell people to follow up and they never come back. They take that first one as like a, like you're blowing them off, but it's like, you know, timing is everything. And for people who follow up and we do get on, the timing is always perfect. It's always better than it would have been six weeks before, two months before. It is exactly what we both need at that time. Exactly. So it's again, as you said, it's it's timing. You have to think of the other person when you're when you're approaching that type of a, a relationship where you don't know the individual but you want to get to know them. Stop making it about you. The only reason you're getting upset is because you're taking it personal. You're you, you're asking yourself, why isn't it working? What's wrong with me? Why doesn't this person like me? It's not personal. It's objective because they have a million and one things to do. The least of which is probably you know joining an interview or or a podcast or taking someone up on a on an invitation to be on a on a platform they have companies to run businesses to run or or other you know family commitments so as long as you you follow up eventually it will be the right time and the second thing again comes back to perspective is when i reach out to someone and i get an automated email or i get something that says uh, now is not the right time or you know we're currently away on, on a business trip and we'll get back to you in the next few months or whatever to me i'm happy because i've now got a response that's one foot in the door mm. i got a response so the process has already started now i'm building momentum everything is momentum the guests that i get on this year i couldn't have got last year because i didn't have the same momentum so you have to start somewhere you can't be disheartened i couldn't you wouldn't have agreed to be the first person on my podcast it's impossible because I, my mindset wasn't in the right place. I didn't have enough people on my podcast to show you that I was serious enough and I didn't have the momentum that I have. So I couldn't have performed the same way on the podcast. And then the relationship probably wouldn't have been built because I wouldn't have cared enough. So everything does happen at the right time. You have to just have it in your head there. The first rejection, that's momentum building, momentum building. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Even if it takes 500 rejections, I don't care. I've got so many emails where people have rejected me. Like, the level of billionaires that I, in my head, I can see this conversations, it, it's happened. Now time just has to catch up. The momentum, I just have to get the momentum at the right level, which is objective because it has to match the timeline for me and for him or for me and for her. When it does, it will be successful. And until then, it just means there's not enough momentum. Simple as that. So I just keep going at it. I love that. B, you are so wise. <laughs> I'm like, <far> wise. <laughs> you are you're so wise and I think at the minimum though it's about how you continue to just put yourself place yourself in these conversations and you're just gathering so much wisdom from so many people and reading so many books I'm just so encouraged by you because you're how old 26 come on man like you making it happen. I love it. Even if it's initially borrowed wisdom, it's wisdom that you'll be able to continue to add to your own, you know, to your own life as things come up, which I think is incredible. I'm honestly um, humbled and bl- blown away that, you know, we're, we're speaking right now. And I, and I, I just hope that at least one person goes away listening to this, uh, you know, better than they started. That, that's, that's simply my, my goal that you have a shift in your perspective. And the one common thing, through all of the messages that you've said and all of the messages that I've shared, I, I want the person or persons to understand is it's internal. It starts with the mindset. It starts with how do you see the world? Because how you see the world will shape your, your external reality. It's as simple as that. If you think everything is against you and it's not going to work and it's all personal, you won't last. You have to shift your perspective on situations and what it means to you. As Tony Robbins says, nothing has meaning except the meaning that you give it. So what meaning are you giving the rejection? What meaning are you giving the the failure? Mm-hmm. What meaning are you giving the blowing off of the person who says they're too busy to speak to you? You can't say, oh, they're arrogant. No, they're busy. It's not the right time. That's it. So I'm going to come back at this next week. Oh, so good. So good. All right, V, before I let you go, you know, here on Redefining Wealth, we ask rapid wisdom questions. 
So I'm going to ask you a few questions and just tell us the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Let's do it. How do you define success? Ooh, enjoying the process of your life as it unfolds. Mm, That is so good. How do you define wealth in three words or less? It starts internally. Did you have that practice? That was too good. No, it's... uh, it's just, I've listened to some of your other episodes and I was thinking about it beforehand, but it was just like, I'm going to let it come naturally to me, but I know kind of what I want to say because of the whole topic of this conversation. It starts internally. Oh, that's really good. Okay. What's one book that has redefined how you see wealth? Oh, there's so many. Um, uh, one, if, if there was one, I would probably say... The Art of Living by Bob Proctor. I haven't read that. The Art of Living. Yeah, it's, it's, it, he talks of, it talks about, you know, building your, your external reality to the level of wealth that you want. But, but the way he approaches it is all about understanding the vibration that you're, you're in and how to get to the right vibration. And I never heard it being put that way before. He really comes at it from an internal perspective. And that's what I really vibe with. And that's what I really try and share with people as something that's worked for me along my journey. I love it. Okay, we'll have to link to that. I'm gonna pick that up. Okay, fill in the blank. My name is, and then for me, the truth about wealth is. My name is Vipul Basanya. And the truth about wealth is that you have to experience it internally before you see it externally. That's it. That's it. I love it, V. Thank you so much for being here. And I appreciate you. Look, if anyone's listening right now, just just reach out to Patrice. Thank her for all that she's done. Leave her a five-star review on iTunes because she certainly deserves it for the momentum that she's built and the effort, you know, and the, and the heart that she's put into every piece of work and every interaction that, that she brings into the world. See, this is another lesson. Did you see what he just did there? <laughs> you see how, <laughs> how he just ended my episode? No, I love it, V. Thank you so much. I look forward to hanging out at Thrive. And not just like taking a picture, like actually having some time to, to sit down and hang out. I know, most definitely. I look forward to it as well. All right. What did I tell you? Vipple is amazing, right? And I can truly attest to everything that we spoke about because it worked on me. (laughs) And very rarely, very rarely do people do what they say they are going to do. And he is such a testament to that. And one of the things that he promised me is that he would create a PDF just for my listeners. So if you guys are interested, I want you to go to the show notes if you want more. And really, I think you should get this because he has a great list of books to read on connecting and networking, go to the show notes and download this free PDF. It's called Building a Legendary Network by Becoming Magnetic. And the best part is he has legendary books to read. And I think everyone should download it, go get one of these books and get started, right? If you know that you need to build up your people pillar, then this is an amazing place to start. And I know it's going to bless you both personally and professionally. And if you are looking to network and connect with some very amazing people in the world, come and meet your fellow Purpose Chasers, your fellow OG listeners. It's going down October 13th in Atlanta, my very first live podcast taping. I'm super excited and super nervous. So I think they call that nurse-sided, but we're already over halfway sold out. And so if you plan on coming, you better come on, come on. I can't wait. I'm so excited. All right. So go to redefiningwealthlive.com, redefiningwealthlive.com, get your ticket, bring a friend and let's have a good time. And let me just give you a heads up. This is not like a 60 minute in and out thing. I was talking to someone in the DMs and they're like, I feel like this is a mini seminar. I'm not calling it a mini seminar, but it is definitely not just a 60 minute quick live podcast taping. I really want to connect and I want you guys to network. I want you to hopefully found your accountability partner uh, somewhere in that in that audience. Um, And I want to meet each and every one of you. So uh, it's not 60 minutes. It'd probably be about three hours. So come and enjoy yourself. 
and connect with some amazing folks, okay? RedefiningWealthLive.com. Until next time, like I say every single week, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.